Another highlight of this trip has to be Port Patrick. We make our way through the narrow street and head to one of the large car parks near the front. The view as you step from the car of the pastel multicoloured buildings lined along the busy seafront is nothing short of breathtaking. The village is built within an amphitheatre of cliffs. The tarred path climbed above the village giving spectacular views back towards the harbour below. Just below the car park to the south we find the excellent lighthouse pottery which sits beside the brick built harbour lighthouse. There are wonderful views of the front from above the little sandy bay right round to the inner harbour which is sheltered by its rocky islet. But Patrick has fought against the sea for centuries. It had a small fishing fleet which operated from the curved sandy harbour. Attempts were made in 1770 to protect it from the strong gales and breakwaters were built but they were destroyed by the strong westerly winds that this coast is renowned for. At one time the mail service to Larne operated from here and there were links with other major ports too but it soon became clear that Port Patrick was far too exposed to maintain a regular service of any sort and gradually the village concentrated its efforts in tourism. The village still retains its fishing fleet and its lifeboat, but again the main focus is tailored to pleasure craft. The seafront at Port Patrick is always a hive of activity, with pleasure boats coming and going. The rocks there provide an interesting playground for the more adventurous, and the gift shops, pubs, hotels and cafes attract a constant string of tourists. There is a monument in the cliffs at the north end of the bay, called the Hands. On the last day of January 1953, we had the great storm when gales of 100 miles an hour swept in from the Atlantic. Over 300 people lost their lives at sea, but the worst disaster was the sinking of the roll-on roll-off ferry Princess Victoria, claiming 133 lives. Another interesting stroll takes us round the inner harbour and onto the rocky islet, giving excellent views back over the pastel coloured buildings that stretch along the front. Port Patrick must be one of the most attractive villages in Scotland. If Kirkcubri is known as the art town and Wigton as the book town, then this must be Galloway's scenic village. The inner harbour is packed with moored pleasure craft. I noticed a circular tower in the field behind the hotel and decided to seek it out. This circular tower seems to date from the 16th century and was originally freestanding, which is in itself unusual and may have been influenced by the village's links to Ireland. At one time Port Patrick was the main link with Ireland and at that time Port Patrick seemed to become their Gretna Green. A daily steam packet brought couples over where some of the formalities were overlooked and couples could disembark, be married by the local minister and be back on board on the same day. The original village dates back to the 1500s as well. Heading southeast, the farm Raden brings us to the oldest Christian site in the Rins, probably dating from the 5th century. At the end of an attractive wooded track we arrive at the gate of the churchyard. The current church was built in the 1800s and was built in the site of a medieval church but it soon became apparent when the renovations were taking place that it was replacing a much older building, possibly even a 5th century monastery, when stones with ancient inscriptions were unearthed. I was so disappointed when I noticed that the renovations were being carried out at the main entrance of the church that usually consists of a huge glass fronted porch containing eight of the oldest Christian monuments in Scotland was blocked off with health and safety barriers. It is essential that this site is restored, that these remarkable stones are returned to the wonderful site where they were first discovered. Dromour is the most southerly village in Scotland. It is even further south in Carlisle. A drive of about four miles brings us to the most southerly point in Scotland. 
Cattle grazed by the roadside as we wind round and up to the dazzling white lighthouse that marks the end of the road. This 26 metre round tower was built as usual by Robert Stevenson on the top of the 85 metre cliffs that are the Mull of Galloway. 